Hey, indie filmmakers, I'm Nick Bodmer. I'm Griffin Hammond, and I'm out of the city. I'm in the woods now. We'll get to that. But today we're also going to talk about uh, the latest developments from Apple's WWDC event, which, Nick, you'll have to tell me if there's anything I should care about. Yep, I'll fill you in. And we're also going to talk about your latest storage, data storage adventures. <laughs> I almost, I almost filled in with the word adventures, but you got there yourself. I'm glad we're on the same page. It is an adventure. That so never right now I am, I'm outside in the the green trees. I figured uh, there might be some wind noise and bird noise, but I thought I would embrace it. So yeah, you. I mean, I'm used to honking horns and fire trucks uh, when we record. <laughs> I'm hearing something different. What's what's the deal here? Yeah, well. Crazily enough, uh, Amy and I made a, a drastic life change. We moved out of New York City and took Peter with us, and we're, we're back in Illinois. I'm glad you didn't leave Peter behind. That's probably good. Right. <laughs> Illinois, where we both hail from, right? I mean, we grew up yeah. in, in Illinois together, and now you're, you're not too far from where we grew up, right? Right, yeah. I'm in St. Charles, Illinois, which is not that far from Naperville, where we went to high school. And uh, But here's the thing. I... You know, I always put in the video on the bottom of the screen where we are, uh -huh. and until now I've been in New York, and I've always put Las Vegas for you, although technically you're next door in Henderson. That's right. So, what do I put now? I can't, I don't know if I can put Chicago. It's the nearest big city, but it's like an hour away. I'd put Chicago. I mean, <laughs> for, for our people can international weigh in in the viewers, you're close enough yeah. to Chicago to count, you know. People yeah. people who live in Illinois will, will uh, maybe take take exception take to that issue, yeah. but everybody yeah. else is fine and yeah. people, people, in illinois, people around here do that too the suburbs of chicago people say they're from chicago yeah. you know i'm in saint charles illinois which is uh you could be in the city the pretty River. quick i mean you jump on the metro yeah. and you're there in 30 minutes if it's an express so right i lived in the city i lived in the suburbs when people ask where i'm from i just say chicago it's easier yeah so that gets well, my it's easy vote. for you because you're a big you're a big Chicago sports fan. You're a big Cubs fan and Bears fan and Can Blackhawks. See, see my Chris Bryant signed hat right there. <laughs> okay, I'm pointing to it. I don't know if people have noticed that in the background before. Chris Bryant signed hat. But that's not what this podcast is about. Back to you, right. living in the woods. <laughs> well, I should just explain. I uh, we, you know, we were two months into coronavirus, staying at home. And Peter, every day, was pointing at the door handle, wondering why we couldn't go outside. And all of his grandparents live around here, so we thought this would be a good time to, to move back to Illinois. And we're in this new work-from-home environment now where I can continue to do my job, uh, both for the recount and for my freelance clients. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, you sent me some pictures. Um like uh, you have this great um, family room with these great big windows, and I just thought it was odd. It was you know painted this very lush green color, and turns out oh, no, nope, yeah. nope, it's a white ceiling. It's just you are surrounded by beautiful greenery, and it just makes everything look green. In fact, you just sent me a picture of your shot right before we started. Like, hey, this is where I'm sitting, and like you can see in the camera, like the camera looks like it's got a green light pointed at it. It's just it's just your beautiful surroundings. <laughs> I'm stuck here inside because <laughs> it's 110 degrees outside. It is nice that I live somewhere now where I can fly my drone legally. Oh, yeah. Because as we've learned, yeah. the entire island of Manhattan is a no-fly zone. Right. Almost entirely, right? Was there like one park you were allowed to or something? No, I mean, you can watch my, my video. I'm very proud of the video I made about uh, why it's illegal to fly in New York City. But uh, you could you could make the argument... You can make the argument that you can fly. What is happening? There's like a ladder moving around. I was gonna say me. it sounds like you're uh, <laughs> you're gonna do some repairs while we podcast. That's fine. You know, we can multitask. Yeah, this, this is the challenge of filming outside. I just wanted to show off the greenery. Yeah, uh, no, I get it. But and I, I'm gonna uh, go on a limb and guess your office is not ready yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't gonna say that part out loud, but I've been there. Also, as long as we're talking about this outdoor shot, uh, I want to say that. It probably. I think my lighting looks pretty natural. You would think I'm, I'm standing near this the window of this screened-in patio area, uh, so you can imagine I'd have a lot of sunlight on me. But actually, I'm competing with the sunlight behind me. You know, it's darker inside the patio than yeah. outside. So I do have a full uh, light dome and aperture 120D pointed at me right now. Um, 
with a it's a very soft light it probably looks pretty natural but without that I, i'd be significantly darker speaking of soft light I, I showed you before we started i uh I'm, i keep tweaking the lighting setup here so i i finally got that umbrella mount for my light the the lighting nice. was pretty harsh last episode on my face i thought so i I'd, I'd love some comments people does this look better than last week i think it does i got so i got a nice big soft light griffin maybe you can share that photo i sent of the setup oh yeah um let, let, I yeah, I haven't, I haven't fully zoomed in and pixel peeped it, but just uh, theoretically a little to go overexposed. From, I don't know. We'll see. Hard to tell. Histogram looks okay. <sighs> just theoretically to go from a LED panel to a much broader light source inside an umbrella should soften it up quite a bit. Yep. I hope so. We'll see. So can I tell you a little bit about Apple WWDC? Yeah, I mean, you told me some of the things I, I saw. It, I mean, it's the developers conference, right? So it's a lot of uh, software updates. So I don't know. Is there anything I should care about as a filmmaker? Yeah, I think a, a couple things. One, you might almost want to just go kind of skip through the... It's a two-hour video. It was jam-packed. Like, if you're just into iPhones and iPads and Macs and things like that, I, I think it's pretty interesting. But... Obviously, yeah. this is normally a stage event, right? With a whole audience, all the developers fly in to California, and yeah. it's a conference. And obviously, that's not happening right now. I so, saw some of their marketing materials had like, uh, is it like the Memoji or something? It had like people, like fake people. Yeah, Was that a yeah. nod to the fact that people can't be in person? Yeah, and in fact, the pre before the show started, it was like kind of like this, like almost like from low Earth orbit going around the Earth with all these little like twinkling lights. And if you blew it up in 4K and looked, they were all little Memoji. And I don't know <laughs> if it's true, but it seemed like like more and more were appearing all the time. Like it was all the developers from around the world logging in to WWDC, kind of like bringing everyone uh, together. It was really cute. It, it, but yeah. so they didn't do a live presentation just like standing on a stage they did it, it was an entire video production like it the the production quality of what they did was outstanding so you might almost hmm. go look at it just for that and in fact they would have these transitions between like one presenter would do something and then they'd be like going to the next presenter and it was all this like really well done drone stuff around apple campus and it, oh, nice. It's definitely worth going to check out just for the uh, production chops. It was incredibly well produced. Um, yeah. Tons of big announcements about iPhones and iPads, but, you know, kind of the rumor and what everybody was excited about is this ARM transition. Intel to ARM transition. Do you know what that is? I don't, but I, I, I think I know that Apple wants to be doing their own processors. Like, do they currently use Intel processors? They currently use So they've been using Intel processors for quite a while. Um, they made that change, what, in the early 2000s, I think? So Apple has made mm -hmm. two processor transitions um, in its history. It started out, uh, the, uh, the Mac was on uh, Motorola processors, and they moved to PowerPC mm -hmm. processors, and then they moved from PowerPC to Intel. So they've done this twice before, and now they're saying, instead of having Intel processors, we are moving entirely to ARM, which are the same kind of chips that power the iPhone and the iPad that they make. They've been making themselves for quite a uh. while. Um, but what's interesting is, over the past few years, like, my iPad Pro processor is better than my Mac Mini Intel i5 processor. It's faster, it's lower power. Intel's kind of slipping, and Apple's going to kind of do it all hmm. itself. Which is really cool, because it should mean more powerful Macs uh, that run cooler and last longer with longer battery life, is, is kind of the, the why you would do this. But it does mean all the software has to be redeveloped for ARM instead of Intel, which honestly isn't as big a problem as it sounds like but there's definitely work that has to be done which is why they announce it to the developers first so the developers can mm. start getting all their software ready but important for video editors they showed final cut pro 10 uh, already up and running and you know all these real-time effects and 4k streams running on um actually the hardware they're showing is a little mac mini box with the ipad 2018 ipad processor in it and that's what they're going to give to developers to to work on their software. So they're not even announcing what hardware you're going to buy for real people. That's going to come later. So even on this like two-year-old processor, it, it was looking really good. They also showed Lightroom and Photoshop up and running. So I guess they've been working with Adobe in the background, and they've been working with Microsoft. So they showed like Word and Excel and stuff like that. Um, they so what kind of timeline are we talking about? Like, would it be like the next computer I buy could be? 
they, arm and it's running the latest version of What they said was, um, one, they still have Intel pro- products in the pipeline, meaning there will be new Macs that come out okay. with Intel processors, and they'll probably be pretty good, and they'll be well-supported for years and years and years. So if you need a computer, you should not feel too worried uh, if you don't care about the minutia like I do. Um, feel free. Buy, if you need a computer, buy a computer with an Intel processor. It's going to be great for a long time. Um, but they did say the first ARM Macs will come out this year. And the transition, meaning how long it will take to get their whole product line over to ARM, will take about two years. Do you suppose this will be like the sort of thing when you price out a Mac and you're choosing all the different hard drive options and RAM options, will you be able to price out the same MacBook Pro with ARM or with Intel? Or are they going to be completely different my, product lines? My guess is they'll be completely different product lines. Like uh, my expectation okay. would be when like they'll take the MacBook Air, which is like their best selling laptop. When they make the MacBook Air ARM, if you want a MacBook Air, ARM is what you get. And most right. likely, you know, yeah. right now, you know, you can pick, I, do I want an i5 or an i5 that's a little faster or the i7, you know, you got all those processor options. I would guess we see a lot of those options paired back if not gone, right? It's like an iPhone. You don't pick what processor you want in your iPhone. It just comes right. with the best one they make, basically. They just kind of give you the fastest one, yeah. Yeah, it's so that, that's my guess, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, who, who knows? Again, no consumer products announced, just the fact that it's coming. So uh, I, yeah. do, I do think you're, especially for mobile um, editors, you're going to see better battery life and better performance uh, when these yeah. eventually come out. So that's cool. Oh. Yeah. The only thing I imagine as it relates to me is like, I still have some software, you know, like small third party apps that aren't that important, but are kind of part of like the podcast workflow or like my video editing workflow that were never updated to 64 bit. Yep. <laughs> so, like, I still have an older version of the Mac OS running on my iMac. Actually, I have like my work iMac and my personal iMac. And, uh, they're running different versions because I still need to get like, like the the software that I used to change ID three tags, uh, wasn't <laughs> it wasn't updated. Working on well, a lot of people yeah. think that that the reason they deprecated thirty two bit because they didn't really have to do it yet and make those not work, but they think it's to get all those out of the way so the ARM transition doesn't look as bad. You know, like those were already left mm. behind as opposed to them getting left behind here. <laughs> um, right. So yeah, that that's going to be a problem. Although. The 32-bit stuff is gone, obviously. You can't even run that on the latest Mac operating system. It just won't launch. But um, they did create some software called Rosetta 2. So back when they transitioned to Intel from PowerPC, they created a piece of software called Rosetta that did an emulation of PowerPC on the Intel processors. So that software that had not even been updated would just run. Now, it might not be quite as fast as if the developer had gone ahead and made those updates, uh, and most developers will do that pretty quickly. But at least at a launch and run, you can do what you need to do. So that, that technology will be built in. Um, so when you install apps that don't yet run uh, natively on ARM, it will kind of translate them on the fly during when you install them so that they'll still run. And they were showing like... Oh, cool. Nice. They, they were older video games, but they were showing like Tomb Raider running on a Mac. Um, that was just totally emulated, and it ran well enough to play the game. So it kind of shows you the, yeah. the performance there. One, uh, there's tons of Mac and iPad announcements, which are beyond the scope of us talking here, but I've been waiting for this for so long. Finally, <laughs> when you're on your iPhone and a call comes in, it doesn't take over the whole screen. It's just a notification that comes down from the top. Have you ever been recording a uh, video and you get a call and it stops recording your video? Oh, it I probably have, but crazy. I don't remember it. Being... I hate it so much. Dude, I'm not going to put my phone on airplane mode every time I go to take a video, but I've definitely had videos cut off because someone calls me while I'm shooting video, and oh, that yeah. won't happen anymore. Thank you. Well, yeah, especially if someone's using, like, you could use your iPhone to shoot a wedding or something. That would just <laughs> yeah. ruin it. That would, would not be good. So that's my quick WWDC update definitely go check out some of the videography and production in the video itself because they did an outstanding job nice we'll put those links in the show notes and and shout out some of the things you were talking about cool so people don't have to watch through all of it if they don't want to but it's pretty cool if you do i think it's worth the time yeah <sighs> what else so what else we got tell me about on? we uh you you had like a big six bay disk station shipped yourself i did okay so yeah um 
Well, what happened is I've been I've been worrying about backups, okay? So I have this yeah. NAS. It's got a bunch of raw footage from old projects and current projects. It's got all my final edited videos. It's got all my Plex media. It's got some server, home lab nerd stuff, VMware, data stores running on it. And the most critical small stuff I replicate up to the cloud. So like my um, f video final projects get replicated up to Google Cloud automatically. But it's too much yeah. data to like back up the whole NAS. It's just too, it's too much to, to pump up to a cloud provider um, and have it be cost effective. So I've been toying with the idea of, you know, I'm, I am closing in on this NAS getting pretty full. Probably time, it's a four bay NAS I have right now. Probably time to move up to like a six or an eight bay. So I've had my eye. Remember I made that video about shucking hard drives out of external drives? So I've been, I'm like, when I see a good sale on those external drives again, maybe I'll buy a bunch and, uh, and think about it. So Best Buy had a sale. I bought uh, four 12 terabyte external drives. One, that's 12, 24, <laughs> 36, and 48. I bought 48 terabytes of storage. <laughs> Which is How are you leaving the other two empty for expansion? For future later? expansion, yeah. So I have yeah. four eight gig drive or eight terabyte drives right now, and I'm going to go to a new NAS that will be four 12 terabyte drives plus room to grow. So I'm pretty excited. And about is that, that is that 48 terabytes and 36 usable? You got it. Yep. I'll be running yep. um, basically a RAID five, which is one parity now. The data nerd in me says, with drives this size, I'd probably rather have two parity drives, but it's a cost-benefit analysis. And the other part of this is I would like to repurpose my old NAS as a backup target for this NAS. So I'll set this new one up, move all my data over to it, wipe the old one clean, and then set it up as a backup target. And the NASes, uh, the two Synology NASes can talk to each other and do basically send the data. So I'll just set them next to each other, replicate all the data, and then... The goal is to find a sucker who will let me park the old NAS at their house <laughs> off-site and replicate to it uh, automatically. So that's the game plan. So you might enjoy that I have fiber internet now. Uh, Griffin, you got fiber internet? Fantastic. That's great <laughs> This is the first place news. I've ever lived that had it. Um, yeah, you know, if, uh, if and when, you know, you get yourself settled in there and you think you got room for me to to pop a little NAS, uh, I might take you up on that offer. Yeah. And so it sounds like you are are fully, uh, you, you've checked off all the all the requirements for, what is it, like a 321 backup? Is that what it's called? Yeah, you want three or copies one, two. on two different types of media and at least one offsite. That's the 321. Yeah. So that's the goal. I already have that using the cloud for my most critical data, but, you know, I have a lot of Plex media, like movies, that I've always said, you know, oh, well, you know, if it blew out, I could, you know, re-download it, but man, that would be a lot of work. Um, yeah. So, there we go. That's the game plan. <laughs> and I'm also thinking uh, I might do a, a video documenting this process of setting up the new NAS, how do you migrate all the data from an old Synology to a new Synology and get it up and running then how do you set up that local replication so that you know you're not transferring 15 terabytes of data over the internet to do this backup do it locally get it yeah. all seeded and then you know what's the what's the network connectivity the goal would be you know if i were to ship somebody maybe you if i i still feel like it's a <laughs> bit of an imposition but we'll we'll talk about that later um the goal would be wherever you send it, you just want to be able to plug it in, plug it into an Ethernet port, and it just works, right? We don't want to mess with port yeah. forwarding and, oh, let's log into your router. And there are ways of doing that, um, and I'm looking at a couple of those right now. But uh, the goal would be plug it in. If your Internet changes or anything like that, it should just always work. So um, I think yeah. I might make a video or maybe a video series on, on this process. We'll see. Yeah. I think our audience would love it. It seems like anytime you do a how to, the kinds of technical things you know how to do, they're really good. Well, you know, data backup isn't always the most interesting topic, except it is to me, but I know it isn't to everybody. Um, but it's really important, so you gotta think about it, because what, yeah. you know, 
what would happen if you lost all that? That would be very sad. There we go. Should we thank our sponsor? Why don't we? Handy Filmmakers is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your filmmaking business. Nick, you and I have always been pretty nerdy. Back in high school, you taught me how to build a computer, and we designed our own websites. And I mean, You probably had websites running on your own servers, right? Yes. I don't think that makes me nerdy, though. <laughs> All right. It is nerdy, and it's a lot of work. <laughs> and I like to think I'm still very DIY. I could build my own website by myself if I wanted to, but this is one of those things where... I have work to do as a freelancer, and I'd like to pay someone who does it right. Anytime someone says, Nick, how do I get a website? I'm like, just go to Squarespace. You're done. <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash griffin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. Nick, I want to apologize for some of the background noise in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, um, I could hear it. It sounds like, you know, you've got neighbors. There's lawn care yeah. perhaps being taken maybe, care of. I think it maybe like was a belt sander or something. <laughs> and definitely it was some ladder movement. Yeah, I noticed I, I like asked you a question and I got like a, huh, yeah. I'm like, oh, Griffin's worrying about his, his audio situation. So I'll just keep talking. That's okay. It yeah. happens. When, in those kinds of situations, there's always more background noise than you heard. And hopefully I ducked the audio up and down as I was talking so you didn't have to listen to it all the time I am not worried about it and I know our audience forgives you they're just excited for you to be out in nature out exploring the great yeah. wilderness and Peter's very happy here he uh my 18 month old is loving running around in the grass and he loves all the animals we actually had a a baby deer in our backyard you know, you sent me a picture of that. You said, like, the mom parked it in your yard and then, like, left for the day and then came back in the evening, basically. Yeah, we were worried at first, but we looked it up, and that's what deer do. They find a safe place for the fawn to hide, and that's what fawns do. They just hide all day from predators while the mom goes off and forages. Nature <laughs> is a beautiful thing. You could make a documentary about it. <laughs> that was, like, something that I... I got my cameras out and tried to film. But of course, I'm filming with my longest lens, which I think is like F4. And of course, the mom finally comes back like just after dusk. <laughs> like Hard the to moment see. when I wished. <laughs> I was like, oh, why am I not filming on my GH5S with my super high ISO? Why haven't I put my F1.2 lens on? Like I just wasn't prepared. I was all day getting ready for like a daytime reunion <laughs> <laughs> it happened just after sundown so i have this really grainy <sighs> footage but i did manage to capture the reunion that, kind of that's good well next time you'll know <laughs> what you need to do yeah all right my friend it's been a pleasure it's good talking to you yeah and we will talk to you next time see ya bye drinking coffee out of my west wing weekly mug excellent podcast that has finished its run. 